Percy Bysshe Shelley Percy Bysshe Shelley, born on August 4, 1792 near Horsham, Sussex, England, was the eldest son of Timothy and Elizabeth Shelley. He was in line to inherit his grandfather's substantial estate and a potential seat in Parliament. Shelley's early literary pursuits began at Eton College, where he studied from 1804. During this time, he initiated his journey into poetry. But his first published work was a Gothic novel titled Zastrozzi in 1810. In this novel, Shelley conveyed his heretical and atheistic beliefs through the character of Zastrozzi. In the same year, he collaborated with fellow student Thomas Jefferson Hogg on a pamphlet of satirical verse titled Posthumous Fragments of Margaret Nicholson. He also published original poetry by Victor and Keziah with his sister Elizabeth in 1810. In 1811, Shelley continued his prolific output by publishing more works, including a pamphlet co-authored with Hogg titled The Necessity of Atheism. This pamphlet, advocating atheism, led to his expulsion from Oxford University after less than a year. Shelley had the opportunity to be reinstated if his father intervened, but this would have required renouncing the pamphlet and professing Christianity. Shelley chose not to compromise his beliefs, resulting in a complete rupture between him and his father, leaving him in a financial hardship for the following two years. At the age of 19, Shelley eloped with 16-year-old Harriet Westbrook. After their marriage, they relocated to the Lake District of England for further study and writing. Two years later, he published his first substantial work, Queen Mab, a philosophical poem. This poem emerged from his friendship with the philosopher William Godwin, embodying Godwin's free-thinking socialist philosophy. Shelley's personal life became complicated when he fell in love with Mary, the daughter of William Godwin and Mary Wollstonecraft. In 1814, he and Mary eloped to Europe, but due to financial constraints, they returned to England after six weeks. In November 1814, Harriet Shelley gave birth to a son, and in February 1815, Mary Godwin gave birth prematurely to a child who survived only two weeks. The following January, Mary took another son, named William, after her father. In May, the couple visited Lake Geneva, where Shelley spent time with George Gordon Byron, engaging in discussions on various topics, including ghosts and spirits. During one of these sessions, Byron suggested that each person present should write a ghost story, leading to Mary's creation of Frankenstein. In the same year, Shelley wrote the verse allegory, Alastor or the Spirit of Solitude. In December 1816, Harriet Shelley tragically took her own life. Shortly after her body was discovered in a London park lake, Shelley and Mary Godwin were officially married. Shelley lost custody of his two children to Harriet due to his adherence to the concept of free love. In 1817, Shelley wrote Leon and Sidna, a lengthy narrative poem dealing with the themes of incest and attacks on religion. Due to its controversial content, it was withdrawn after only a few copies were published. It was later edited and reissued as the Revolt of Islam in 1818. During this period, Shelley also wrote political tracts signed as the Hermit of Marlowe. In early 1818, he and Mary left England for the final time. Over the next four years, Shelley produced his major works, including the lyrical drama Prometheus Unbound in 1820. Travelling and residing in various Italian cities, the Shelleys had close associations with the British poet Leyhand and his family, as well as with Lord Byron. On July 8, 1822, shortly before turning 30, Shelley tragically drowned in a storm while attempting to sail from Leghorn to La Spezia, Italy, aboard his schooner, the Don Juan. Some of his notable works include A Defense of Poetry, A Philosophical View of Reform, Adonis, Alastor, Hymn to Intellectual Beauty, and Mont Blanc. Alastor or the Spirit of Solitude Alastor or the Spirit of Solitude is a poem by Percy Bysshe Shelley composed from September 10 to December 14, 1815 near Windsor Great Park and first published in 1816. The poem initially had no title when it was shared with Shelley's contemporary friend Thomas Love Peacock. The poem, consisting of 720 lines, is considered one of Shelley's early major works. Peacock suggested the name Alastor, derived from Roman mythology, which refers to an evil genius. However, this name does not describe the hero or poet of the poem. Instead, it pertains to the spirit that divinely animates the poet's imagination. 
Summary of the poem. In a last year, the speaker ostensibly narrates the life of a poet who fervently pursues the most obscure aspects of nature in search of strange truths in undiscovered lands. The poet's journey takes him to various places including the Caucasus mountains, Persia, Arabia, Kashmir and the wild Carmenian waste. During his travels, he rejects the advances of an Arab maiden, striving to find an idealized embodiment of a woman. One night as the poet wanders, he dreams of a veiled maid. This veiled vision serves as a bridge between the natural and supernatural realms and provides a glimpse into the world beyond nature. The poet's encounter with this supernatural vision marks a turning point, disrupting his con- connection to the natural world. As he yearns for a reunion with the supernatural, the boundaries between his imagination and the natural world become blurred. However, the vision remains elusive and the poet is left searching for a connection he cannot quite grasp. Contemplating death as a potential gateway to the supernatural world, he glimpsed. The poet observes a small boat drifting down a river. He enters the boat, which is propelled by a smooth wave and drifts further into the heart of the natural world. In this journey, he perceives the supernatural presence through his imagination, transcending sensory perception. As the boat approaches an immeasurable void, the poet is prepared to sink into the supernatural world, breaking through the threshold into death. His senses become dulled and his imagination helps him sense the presence of the spirit within the natural world's images. Upon reaching the obscurest chasm, the poet's final sight is the moon. As this image fades from his mind, he attains transcendence entering the supernatural world. The journey that led him to the source of nature ultimately culminates in immanence within the same natural structure, a world free from decay and change. Hymn to Intellectual Beauty Hymn to Intellectual Beauty is a poem composed by Percy B. Shelley in 1816 and published in 1817. Shelley wrote this poem during the summer of 1816 while staying with Lord Byron near Lake Geneva, Switzerland. The poem was originally sent to his friend Leigh Hunt, who unfortunately lost it. Consequently, Shelley had to create another finished version of the poem and send it again. It was eventually published in Leigh Hunt's Examiner on January 19, 1817. In Hymn to Intellectual Beauty, Shelley evokes the presence of a mysterious and unseen force, a spirit of beauty which casts his shadow throughout the world. He contemplates the enigmatic nature of the spirit and why it appears and disappears, leaving humans feeling desolate. Shelley acknowledges the futility of seeking answers to such questions, comparing it to trying to understand why rainbows vanish or why human emotions encompass both love and hate, despair and hope. He emphasizes that these questions remain unanswered by voices from other realms, and the terms demon, ghost and heaven have been used in vain attempts to explain them. Shelley posits that only the light of the spirit of beauty bestows grace and truth upon the ever-changing and elusive dream of life. He implores the spirit not to forsake the world, highlighting that its continuous presence would render humanity immortal and omnipotent. The spirit nurtures human thought and creativity, and the poet prays for its constancy. Without the spirit, death would become a dreaded experience. Reflecting on his own youth, Shelley recounts his search for spiritual reality, which initially led him to the realm of ghosts and the deceased. However, the shadow of the spirit of beauty suddenly graced him with elation and purpose. He pledged his dedication to the spirit and remains committed to that vow. He believes that it holds the power to free the world from its state of slavery and prays that it brings tranquility to his own life as he deeply reveres it. This spirit has taught him to fear his own limitations and to love all of humanity. Ozymandias Ozymandias is a sonnet penned by the English romantic poet Percy Bysshe Shelley. It first appeared in The Examiner of London on January 11, 1818. The poem was subsequently included in Shelley's collection Rosalind and Helen, a modern eclogue with other poems, and later in a posthumous compilation of his works published in 1826. Shelley composed this poem as part of a friendly competition with his fellow poet and friend Horace Smith. Both poets wrote sonnets on the same theme and titled them Ozymandias. The poem explores the themes of history's fate and the relentless passage of time. 
it conveys the idea that even the most eminent individuals and the empires they build are transient destined to crumble into obscurity during the christmas season of 1817 to 18 horace smith joined percy bysshe shelley and mary shelley during this time members of shelley's literary circle often engaged in friendly challenges to write competing sonnets on shared subjects for instance shelley john keats and leigh hunt composed competing sonnets about the nile around the same period for ozymandias shelley and smith drew inspiration from a passage in the writings of the greek historian diodorus siculus found in bibliotheca historica the passage described an enormous egyptian statue and included the inscription king of kings ozymandias am i if any want to know how great i am and where i lie let him outdo me in my work In Shelley's poem, Diodorus is transformed into a traveler from an antique land, setting the stage for a poignant reflection on the impermanence of human achievements. The Cenci, a tragedy in five acts. The Cenci, a tragedy in five acts, is a verse drama written by Percy Bysshe Shelley. It was composed in 1819, and inspired by the real-life story of the House of Cenci, with a particular focus on Beatrice Cenci. Shelley wrote this play in Rome and Villa Valsovano. near Livorno from May to August 5 1890 the drama was published by Charles and James Ollier in London in the same year additionally Shelley printed an edition himself in Livorno Italy consisting of 250 copies this endeavor was financially motivated as Shelley found it more cost effective to print in Italy he had high hopes for the play envisioning it as a production intended for a popular audience The Cenci is a dramatic tragedy set in Rome in 1599 based on the historical events involving the Cenci family during the papacy of Pope Clement VIII. Act 1 introduces Cardinal Camillo discussing a murder with Count Francesco Cenci. Camillo proposes that the count relinquish a portion of his wealth to the church to avoid public scandal. Count Cenci known for his cruelty has sent two of his sons to Spain with the expectation that they will perish. Beatrice the count's virtuous daughter pleads for help from her father's oppressive rule but the guests at Cenci's feast are afraid to intervene Act 2 continues with Count Cenci's torment of Beatrice and his plan to imprison her in Petrella Beatrice's attempt to petition the pope for relief is in vain and her hope diminishes Orsino a prelate encourages Giacomo one of Cenci's sons to murder the count Act 3 reveals Beatrice's harrowing confession to Lucrezia, her stepmother, implying incestuous rape by the count. Orsino, Lucrezia and Giacomo conspire with Beatrice to murder Count Cenci. Act 4 shifts to Petrella Castle, where a group of servants tries to assassinate Count Cenci. They initially fail but ultimately succeed. A papal legate, Savella, arrives to arrest the conspirators except for Orsino who escapes. Act 5 sees the suspects on trial in Rome. Marzio confesses under torture and implicates other members of the Cenci family. Beatrice refuses to accuse anyone and is sentenced to death. Despite appeals to the Pope, the Cenci family is condemned to die and the play concludes with Beatrice heading to her execution. The play received critical acclaim with many lauding it as a tragic masterpiece. Oscar Wilde praised Shelley's understanding of the dramatic form and Mary Shelley considered it a surpassing excellence. George Bernard Shaw, after watching a performance in 1886, likened Shelley and Shakespeare as the only dramatists dealing in despair of a similar quality. Other prominent figures such as Lord Byron and William Wordsworth also expressed admiration for the work. Shelley's intention was to have the play staged, but this did not come to fruition. O to the West Wind Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote this poem O to the West Wind in 1819 in Cassine Wood near Florence Italy. It was first published in 1820 as part of the collection Prometheus Unbound a lyrical drama in four acts with other poems. The poem serves as a vehicle for Shelley to express his fervent beliefs in reform and revolution and it portrays the wind as a symbol for the spreading of change and new ideas particularly in the wake of the Peterloo massacre of August 1819. Summary of the poem In order to the west wind the speaker invokes the wild west wind of autumn describing its dual nature as both a destroyer and preserver the wind is portrayed as the dirge of the dying year storing up storms and creating chaos 
The speaker implores the wind to hear his plea. The wind is depicted as a powerful force that stirs up the sea and ocean and the speaker continues to beseech it to listen. He expresses his desire to be carried away by the wind like a leaf, cloud or wave so he can be free and untamed once more. The speaker's heart is like the wind but he feels bound by the weight of earthly existence. In the final part of the poem, the speaker asks the wind to make him its instrument, its lyre. He wants to be driven by the wind's power and uses words to inspire and prophecy. He hopes that his words will be scattered among mankind like a trumpet of prophecy, heralding the arrival of a new season or a new era of change. The poem concludes with the famous line, If winter comes, can spring be far behind? This line expresses hope and the cyclical nature of life and change, suggesting that even in the darkest times, there is a promise of renewal and transformation. Ode to the West Wind is a quintessential romantic poem that explores the themes of nature, the power of the imagination, and the role of the poet as a visionary and agent of change. The poem structure is divided into five sections, with each section contributing to the overall theme of transformation and renewal. The wind serves as a powerful and dynamic symbol throughout the poem. It represents both destruction and rejuvenation, reflecting the dual nature of nature itself. The wind's ability to carry the poet's words and ideas to a wider audience symbolizes the poet's desire to inspire and provoke change. The poem also reflects Shelley's personal and political beliefs. The turbulent and revolutionary times in which he lived are mirrored in the poem's imagery of upheaval and transformation. Shelley's hope for a better future and a more just society is evident in the poem's underlying optimism. Ode to the West Wind is a celebration of the power of the imagination and the poet's ability to bring about change through their words and ideas. It is a lyrical and evocative exploration of the natural world and the human spirit, offering both a sense of the challenges of life and the potential for rebirth and renewal. Prometheus Unbound Prometheus Unbound is a four-act lyrical drama by Percy B. Shelley, inspired by the classical myth of Prometheus. The drama was first published in 1820 and is known for its exploration of themes such as freedom, resistance against tyranny, and the power of human imagination. Shelley wrote this as a closet drama, meaning it was intended to be read rather than performed on stage. Summary of the poem In Prometheus Unbound, Prometheus, the titan, is initially depicted as a rebel who defies the tyrannical rule of Jupiter and suffers immense torment for his defiance. However, Prometheus remains unyielding in his quest for freedom and knowledge, refusing to submit to Jupiter's authority. Prometheus's suffering comes to an end when he is ultimately released from his captivity. His release is not the result of yielding to Jupiter's tyranny, but rather through the intervention of powerful forces including Demogorgon, a symbol of elemental and volcanic power. This intervention leads to Jupiter's downfall. Prometheus's reunion with his beloved Asia symbolizes ideal love and the triumph of the human spirit over oppression. The liberated Prometheus and Asia represent the potential for positive transformation within human society. The drama concludes with a note of optimism as it foretells a future where liberty and goodness will prevail and oppressive forces will be overcome. Themes of the poem Knowledge and Freedom the classical Prometheus myth centers on the gift of fire, which symbolizes knowledge and enlightenment. Shelley's poem explores the idea that the pursuit of knowledge and freedom is worth any suffering or sacrifice. Authority and Resistance The drama portrays the conflict between oppressive authority embodied by Jupiter and the resistance to such authority represented by Prometheus. It reflects Shelley's own revolutionary and anti-authoritarian beliefs. Christianity and Forgiveness The theme of forgiveness is present in the drama when Prometheus forgives Jupiter, highlighting the Christian concept of forgiveness and redemption. Shelley uses this theme to convey a message of hope and transformation. Nature, Imagination and the Sublime Shelley's work is often associated with the Romantic movement, which celebrated nature and the power of the imagination. Prometheus Unbound contains elements of the sublime, with nature and imagination playing significant roles in the liberation of the characters and the world. The poem offers a vision for a better future and a world free from tyranny, 
emphasizing the resilience of the human spirit and its capacity for transformation and renewal. To a Skylark To a Skylark is a renowned poem by Percy Vichelli, composed during a walk in the countryside near Livorno, Italy. It was published in 1820 alongside its lyrical drama Prometheus Unbound. The poem draws inspiration from the song of a Skylark and Shelley and Mary's encounter with this bird during their time in Italy. Shelley's inspiration for the poem came from a serene evening in the Italian countryside where he and Mary Shelley heard the melodious song of a skylark. This enchanting experience set the stage for Shelley's poetic exploration of the skylark's beauty and its profound impact on human perception. This encounter was a moment of communion with nature which deeply affected Shelley's creative spirit. The structure of the poem consists of 21 stanzas each comprising 5 lines. The rhyme scheme in each stanza is A B C B. Shelley expertly combines trochaic trimeter and iambic hexameter to create the poem's distinctive rhythm. Throughout the poem, Shelley not only celebrates the skylark's beauty and its natural habitat, but also delves into the profound influence of sound on human senses. He highlights the transformational power of nature on human perception and experience. The poem opens with a vivid description of the skylark as a celestial being soaring high above the earth. Shelley characterizes the bird's song as an unpremeditated art, emphasizing its spontaneous and enchanting nature. The skylark's ability to sing as it ascends is compared to a cloud of fire, and its presence is described as unbodied joy. Shelley employs a series of similes to evoke the skylark's song as a force of nature. He likens it to moonbeams, raindrops, and other natural phenomena, but ultimately finds these comparisons inadequate to capture the skylark's transcendent melody. One of the central themes of the poem is the comparison between the skylark's song and the poet's own creative expression. Shelley questions whether a poet can ever match the skylark's song, emphasizing the profound connection between the bird's music and the poet's own hymns and verses. Both the skylark and the poet create unbidden art that resonates with the fears and hopes of humanity. The poem further explores the skylark's role as an emblem of joy and inspiration. It transcends the limitations of human existence, unfettered by the burdens of languor, annoyance, or the fear of death. In contrast, Shelley reflects on the inherent sorrows, fears, and imperfections of human life. The skylark's song is described as a source of purity and serenity that eludes human beings. Shelley contrasts the bird's harmonious music with the complexities of human emotions, highlighting the burdens of pain, sorrow, and the ever-present fear of death. In the final stanzas, the poet expresses his desire to learn the secret of the skylark's perpetual joy. He hopes that by understanding even a fraction of this harmonious madness, humanity can experience a profound connection with nature and attain a higher level of inspiration. Overall, to a skylark celebrates the beauty of nature, the transformative power of sound, and the transcendent qualities of the skylark song. It juxtaposes the unburdened joy of the skylark with the complexities and imperfections of human existence, inviting readers to contemplate the profound influence of nature on the human spirit. A defense of poetry. A defense of poetry is a significant essay by Percy Bysshe Shelley, written in 1821. and published posthumously in 1840 in this essay shelley offers a powerful defense of poetry and its place in human society culture and imagination the essay was composed in response to his friend thomas love peacock's article the four ages of poetry which had been published in 1820 shelley's argument for poetry is deeply rooted in the romantic era which celebrated imagination emotion and the beauty of the natural world He maintains that poetry as a form of creative expression is essential for the spiritual and moral growth of individuals and society as a whole. Key elements of Shelley's essay include poets as the unacknowledged legislators of the world. Shelley famously states that poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. He argues that poets through their imaginative and artistic creations shape and influence the moral and ethical values of society. They serve as guides to the human spirit and inspire individuals to seek higher ideals. Language and poetry. Shelley explores the relationship between language and poetry. He contends that language itself is a creative force and poetry is the highest and most harmonious form of language. 
Poetry has the power to unite thought and feeling, bringing order and beauty to the expression of human experience. Moral and Social Influence Shelley asserts that poets are instrumental in advancing moral and social progress. Their ability to evoke empathy and understanding through their works makes them catalysts for positive change. He maintains that poets establish the foundation for laws, civil society, and the cultural values that shape the world. Imagination and Truth Shelley emphasizes the importance of the imagination in poetry. He believes that poets use their imaginative faculties to grasp the hidden truths of the world, providing readers with profound insights. Shelley views poetry as a medium for unveiling the concealed wonders of existence. Language and Freedom Shelley perceives language as both an instrument of intellectual freedom and a means of social control. He recognizes the dual nature of language and emphasizes the importance of poets using language to empower and enlighten individuals rather than to suppress them. In a defense of poetry, Shelley champions poetry as a vital force for intellectual, emotional and moral enlightenment. He underscores the transformative power of poetic language and the role of poets as guides and lawmakers in the intellectual and moral development of humanity. The essay has had a lasting influence on the understanding of the significance of poetry in culture and society.